All right, perfect. Okay, everybody. So let's take a look at the front real quick. Um, I'm sure you knew how to complete the square at one point in time. Maybe you forgot. Maybe you still know how. I don't know. So this will just be a little refresher. Ah, for Pete's sake, hold that thought. I do. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Summer. Oh there we go. Okay. All right, you're ready to smell. <laughs> there. Okay. Oh. All right. So let's take a look. Let's just go through. Um, I'm not going to read every single step for you. I'll just sort of summarize it. What's really nice about completing the square is that you can use it to solve any quadratic. It doesn't have to be a special case. Literally, any single one you can solve by completing the square. However, it's going to be a lot easier if A is one and B is even. So we will probably do, I don't think we're going to do all of this. So just look to Jupiter for what I assigned from that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So uh, let's follow through the example here. So if I am going to solve this one, I notice, hey, this one should be easy-ish because A is one and B is even. So first steps first, you're going to move your constant to the right-hand side. So they subtract the three over to the other side. Your next step, if you recall, was to take half of B. So here it is down here in this box. You're going to take B, in this case, B is four. You want to take half of it, which is two, and then you want to square that value. So they have four is kind of this magic number that they've come up with. You take half of B, you square it. It's always going to be a positive number, right? Because any number squared is a positive. That's what I'm going to add to both sides of my quadratic. So I'm going to add it in right here. I'm going to add it in right here. So this is what I end up with once I have added that magic number to both sides and sort of simplified, right? Because over here, a negative three plus four got me the one. And that four is just kind of filling in the hole right there. When you do this and have done this correctly, that left-hand side can always be factored into a perfect square. So there are factors of four that add up to be four, in this case, two and two. Instead of writing it as x plus two times x plus two, we write it as x plus two squared. And now I'm ready to just take the square root of both sides. Don't forget when you take a square root, you need to remember positive and negative. So I'm almost done, Grace. All I have to do is minus the two from the other side. I don't want to do this. Well, that's great. Not everybody does. But look at what you've derailed me. And now I have no idea what I'm talking about. Ay, ay, ay. Anywho, I'm here, and all I have to do is solve for x. So if I just minus that 2 over, I would do negative 2 plus 1 and negative 2 minus 1. And there are my two answers. Now, is it always that easy? No, because sometimes a is not 1 and b is not even. So flip your paper over. So. Uh, go ahead and try the first one. The first one should be easy because A is one and B is even. So see if you remember how. Go through the steps. I know I did them quickly, but apparently everybody knows how to do this. So we'll see. You do or you don't? I do not. Oh. Well, I got you. Well, let's go through it together then. What are you going to do first? Yes. Subtract seven to the other side. What do you do next? Six. Half of six, yep, whatever B is, we're gonna take half of it. So in this case, half, well, it's a negative six, but it doesn't really matter because when I square it, half of it, it's, I'm only gonna have a positive anyway, right? So half of negative six is negative three, and what's negative three squared? 
nine. So it's always going to be a magic positive number that I add to both sides. So I'm going to fill in that gap and I'm going to add a nine over there. And if you think about it, like I'm allowed to do this because whatever you do to one side, you do the other. I add a nine to both sides. So even though it feels like this random number, it's not, it's setting me up to complete this perfect square on the left hand side. On the right, I can just add negative nine and seven. That's just a two. Okay, cool. But on the left, when you try and factor that, this is where it turns into magic. Because there are always going to be factors of nine that add to be negative six, and they just so happen to be negative three and negative three, right? Right? Wouldn't it be negative three and negative three? But instead of writing it two times, I just write it as x minus three squared. If you did it right, that should always happen. Oh, it just equals two. Right? Yeah, because negative seven plus nine, it's just two. No. I'm trying to solve for x, but now I'm set up to do what? Jake? Take the square root of both sides. Yes, I can take the square root of both sides. So square root of this, square root of this. So on the left, when I have x minus three squared and I take the square root, I'm just left with x minus three. On the right, now I've hit a little bit of a snag because two is not a perfect square. So I don't know what the square root of two is. So I'm just gonna leave it as a square root of two. But what do you gotta remember? I took the square root. So don't I need positive and negative in front of it? You know what I should have asked you before we started was how many solutions should I have for this? Yeah. Two, right? So if you forget that, you're only going to get one answer. So hopefully if you're constantly checking, okay, I should have two answers here. You'll be like, oh shoot, where's my other one? And then you remember, oh yes, I took a square root. I should have accounted for both, both roots. Am I done? No, I'm super close. I'm trying to get X by itself. All I got to do is add that three to both sides. Watch how we write it though, because I'm always interested to help, help differently people write this part. When you have a plus minus like this, we usually put this as the second term. So I would write this as three plus minus square root of two, like that. And that's two answers, because it's three plus the square root of two and three minus the square root of two. Is it wrong if you put the plus three at the end? No, it just is a little bit more awkward. So we usually just do it like that. If you want to put the funny brackets around it, you can, but there they are, two answers in all their glory. Now, what in the world am I supposed to do with number two? Because now I have a problem. A is not one. Better? Yeah, I can still, in this one, can I just divide both sides by three? I sure can. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's divide everybody by three, both sides. So now I get x squared minus two x minus 15. So go ahead and now it should be, we got lucky here because now it turns into an easy one. I should have um, be able to solve this one using clean the square because A is one and B is even. So go ahead and try it if you haven't already. Thank you. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but it seems like one of the right answers. Okay, so I'm here. I've already um, taken the liberty of moving the constant to the right hand side. Uh, so I just add it right if it's negative, I'd have to add 15. So make sure that you have a positive 15 over here, not negative. Now, I need to figure out that magic number to add to both sides. What is it this time? It's one. Half of negative two is negative one, but negative one squared is one. So I add one to both sides. 
On the right, that's just 16. Okay, cool. On the left, what are factors of one that have to be negative two? Negative one, negative one. So I just write it as x minus one squared. Look at that. Now we got lucky this time because when we, what do we do next? What's that next step? Square root both sides. And it just so happens that 16 is a perfect square. But what do you have to remember? Plus and minus four, right? And that's where your two answers are gonna come from because you have to consider both roots. Add that one over. So don't leave your answer like this, by the way. We had to in the last one because I can't go any further than that without turning it into decimals. This, you can do that. You should do that. If you don't do that, I'm probably going to take off a half a point or two. One plus four is five, and one minus four is a negative three. That's your answers. Not this thingamajiggy. You can do the addition subtraction, so you should. All right. Now, we have a problem in number three. That's not a problem, but what's the issue? B is, not even. B is not even. But remember, you can use completing the square to solve any quadratic. So I can do it. I'm just going to have to deal with some fractions. I highly recommend, this is actually one of those rare cases where it's actually easier to just leave it in fraction than it is to go to decimal. Even if it's not a bad decimal, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, leaving it in fractions, it actually works out kind of nicely in the end. So let's try it. We're going to start out the same way we always do, move C to the other side. So I'd have a negative one over there on the left. OK, I know half of negative 5 is negative 2.5. Don't go to decimals, I'm telling you. Half of negative five, isn't that negative five divided by two or negative five over two, right? Isn't it negative five halves like that? Isn't that half of B, right? You with me? So now I need to take that and I need to square it. So there's half of B and now half of B squared. What would that get me? What is negative five halves squared? 25 fourths. You got to square the top and the bottom. That's my magic number that I'm adding to both sides is 25 fourths. So I know it looks bad, but it's not. Watch, it'll all come out so nicely in the end. 25 fourths added to this side, and I also have to add it to this side, 25 fourths. A little bit of fraction action. Yes, I do have to add these two together, but instead of it writing it as negative one, couldn't it just be negative four over four? Isn't that the same thing as negative one? But then I at least have common denominators. So pretend that's a negative four over four for a second. Add those two together. Don't I get 21 fourths? So that wasn't so bad. But yes, occasionally you have to add fractions. Now on the left. How are you supposed to factor that thing? You know what factors of 25 fourths add up to be a negative five? Turns out you do. You just don't even know that you do, Cedric. Yes, it's always just that half of B. Oh, look at, look at the other ones that we did, right? Isn't the number that we put right there, isn't it always half of that number? Look at this one. The number you put right there, it's half of this one it's always going to be half of B. So watch, even though this looks crazy, I just want X and then half of this number, negative five halves. That's all it is. So no, you don't have to sit there and try and figure out factors of 25 fourths that has to be negative five. You already know what it is. It's just going to be half of B. Watch the signs though, right? Cause that matters. So. I had negative five, so I want negative five halves right there. Now I'm ready to take the square root of both sides. Square root u, square root u. Don't forget positive and negative. Now, when you're taking the square root of a fraction, don't you take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately? 
Don't you remember? Yes. Okay. Now the square root of 21 is nice. So I'm just going to leave it. But downstairs, the square root of four is just two. And now I'm actually super close to being done because all I have to do is add five halves back to the other side. I already have common denominators. So when you add that five halves over, look what this looks like. If they both have that denominator of two, couldn't I just write it as five plus minus square root of 21 and the whole thing is over two? Isn't that allowed? Can I do that? Sure I can, I just did it. I already have common denominators, I put them together. Perfect. Okay, one more we have to talk about before I let you do your homework. What happens when you have something like number four? What happens when A is not one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what are you gonna do? And I can't just like factor it, well. Yeah, I basically have to force A to be one if it's not. We got lucky on number two. A wasn't one there, but I could divide everybody by three and it still came out nice. I still have to do the same thing though, even though it's not going to come out nice. I have to have a equal to one. So let's try it. So on number four, I already have the C on the other side. So that part's already done. But now I have to divide everybody by four. So that leading coefficient has to be one. So I'm going to divide the left hand side by four and the right hand side by four. So this is where I'm at. X squared minus X equals nine fourths. Sign over a little bit. Have to have a equal to one. And now, unlucky for us, b is no longer even, but whatever. We're already uh, in a sticky situation. But it's fine. It's just numbers. I'm still going to do the steps all the same way. So I have c on the other side done. Next thing is to figure out that magic number. Who's got that magic number that I'm going to add to both sides? Uh, one fourth. Yes, one fourth. Do you see why it's one fourth? Let's talk. What is B, first of all? What's B right here? What's the value of B? Negative one. I need half of that. So that's negative one half. And now I need to square it. Negative one half times negative one half is now a positive one fourth. You with me? Yep. Okay, so that's our magic number we're going to add to both sides. Add a fourth, add a fourth. We get lucky on the right hand side because they're already like uh, common denominators, so that's just 10 fourths. Uh, you want to reduce it? What's 10 fourths? Five halves, right? On the left, I don't know the factors of one fourth that add to be negative one, but yes, I do, because it's always going to fit the pattern. X, and then what goes right here? Yes, minus one half, because it's always half of that number right there. Whatever B is. B was negative one, I want half of it, so it's negative one half in this case. And now I'm set up to do what I got to do. Square root both sides, square to you, square to you. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I was just thinking if we didn't reduce it, it would have been nicer. So I'm going to not reduce it. Let's put it back to 10 fourths. Okay, square root both sides. We get x minus a half, positive and negative, square root of 10 over 2. And now all I got to do is add that one half to the other side, and I'm done. So what's it end up looking like? One plus minus square root of 10, and the whole thing is over two. Nice break. All right, any questions so far? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, what? Let's see, there are, how about we do the odds? Yeah. 
Yeah, just the other. 